are now listening to Just Another Year with Nick Rohde and Ryan Shadman. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Wednesday edition of Just Another Year Chicago, hosted by myself, Nick Rohde. And today, we're going to be going over what's next for the Chicago Bears as every game is a playoff game in order to make the playoffs, along with game predictions for this weekend's matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. After that, everything is followed by talking about the Bulls preseason so far and their game against the Oklahoma City Thunder that's happening tonight and a little bit about Illinois State basketball. No new news on the White Sox, Cubs, or Blackhawks at the moment, but uh, if you want to stay up to date on all sports content, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Chicago Nick, Chicago N-I-C, no K, or hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen to make sure that you stay up to date on all content. So to start things off, these Chicago Bears. So they had a great win this past Sunday over the weekend Houston Texans, 36-7. to A um, couple things that really stood out, kind of hit on last time, but just to get to more into it. Um, is that Mitch Trubisky is heating up under Bill Lazor, along with the rest of the offense. It's not just him. Um, being you know, in Mitch's position, he was on the FedEx Air Offensive Player of the Week voting, um, and especially having a stat line like his, over 250 yards passing, three touchdowns and no interceptions, and nearly a perfect quarterback passing rating. Uh, you cannot beat that. So it's really great to see that Mitch is starting to look like the guy that we had back in 2018, when the Bears were obviously NFC North champs and unfortunately lost in the playoffs on a Cody Parkey double doink. So it's good to see Mitch is back. Um, he had a rough year in 2019 and obviously the start of this season. He started the first two games starting 2-0 and and then in, in, in week three against the Atlanta Falcons. Um, he kind of was a little shaky at first and Matt Nagy decided to throw in Nick Foles. Um, so, you know, great to see Mitch is back. He's playing really good football. And then on top of that, if he keeps up this current pace with his stats, he's going to finish the season with 20 touchdown passes, seven interceptions, just under 2,200 passing yards, and a completion percentage of 67%. So you can't really ask much more for a quarterback, especially after missing, um, I believe it was, you know, a total of eight games. So... That's, that's, there's no excuses anymore for Mitch uh, as is, but he is living up to his mistakes. He's living up to the potential that he had, and having a new play caller on Bill Lazor is definitely helping out Mitch Trubisky. And along with that, it's helping out the rest of the offense. David Montgomery had over 100 total yards, um, 100 yards rushing individually, and he only ran the ball eight times. So that's something that's super impressive. Uh, I'm sorry, he, had, he ran the ball only eight times but had over 100, 100 yards total which is great. And a lot of his runs were big gains uh, of five yards or more. So you cannot complain when you have a running back that's averaging more than five yards a carry. So that's really good to see along that. And then you had a nice compliment with Cordell Patterson because if David Montgomery is doing well, then you have to you know, prepare for a guy like Cordell Patterson, who is a very versatile player. He can play anywhere on the field. And you know, this experience with him at running back did not work at first. But now that the offense is opening up, Uh, it's been really great to see him doing well. But there's a lot of things that need to get done to have a chance at the playoffs still. Uh, You know, first of all, it starts off with finding a way to beat the Minnesota Vikings. And let's be honest, the Bears lost to them 13-9 to the last time their meeting was at Soldier Field. Uh, It was Kirk Cousins' first Monday night football win ever. Uh, So he finally got his first win and a win against the Bears on top of it. Kirk Cousins is not a good quarterback against the Chicago Bears. And... Um, there was absolutely zero offense in that game. So if the Bears can carry over the momentum that they have had over the last three games, including the Green Bay and Detroit game that they lost, if they can carry over the momentum of the offense and the defense comes into the Viking game, play like they did last time against the Vikings, but also against the Texans, only holding them to seven points, there is no reason why the Bears should lose that game. It's a very winnable game. It's going to be a tough matchup. Both teams are fighting for their playoff hopes. And this game will determine who's really going at this point. Uh, there's still uh, you know, a possibility that neither one of them make it with Arizona holding the current seventh and final wild card, uh, seventh and final playoff spot from the NFC, which is a wild card spot. But we'll get to that in a little bit. But want to talk a little bit more about this Vikings game. Uh, the Bears are currently the number five offense in the NFL over the last three weeks, and that's with two losses, as I, as I was talking about earlier. The offense is clearly doing a lot better under Bull Lazor. He's, you know, throwing more tricks at defenses. He's preparing himself more, and he knows what the defenses are ahead. 
Um, he obviously is an offensive coordinator. He's not a head coach like Matt Nagy. So Matt Nagy had way more responsibilities on top of it. He was taking on play calling, which isn't helping out in any way. He's too busy. He's not able to focus on leadership. He's not able to focus on making you know, the little itty-bitty details that a head coach should be making and trusting the rest of his coaching staff. So I really like the way Bill Lazor is handling things. Uh, I know a lot of fans are like, well, we lost two games with him as a play caller, but we also scored more points than we have in this two-game stretch than we had almost during the entire losing streak. So, you know, obviously coming out having back-to-back 30-point games from this offense when this offense was dead last in almost every category earlier in the season is something definitely encouraging and that fans should, you know, trust Bill Lazor a little bit on this. And with Bill Lazor opening up the offense, that gives Chuck Pagano the opportunity, who has also seen a lot of heat, for playing too conservative this season, and which he did against the Vikings. There was not a lot of blitz. There was not a lot of let's go after the ball and try to intercept it, risking giving up a big pass. Um, and Bill Lazor in the offense has opened up Chuck Pagano in order to play this defense the way it should be played. Back in 2018, the Bears' defensive unit was one of the best defensive units of the decade, uh, voted by ESPN. And um, what's crazy about that is that because the offense was working that year, uh, that was one of Mitch's better years. Uh, overall, we had a great running game as well. We had good receivers. And when you have a good offense, you can be more aggressive on defense because you have the trust in your offense that you're going to score the ball. And, you know, Chuck Pagano, the last couple games, has been blitzing a lot more. Why the Bears had seven sacks on Deshaun Watson, who is a very mobile quarterback and can get out of the pocket. But the Bears still had seven sacks on him, including a safety. And then the uh, one drive where Watson ended up getting hurt, uh, they put, the Texans put in their backup quarterback, and the Bears stopped them in the red zone on fourth down with a sack by Roquan Smith. So, you know, this team looks completely different right now. Um, and kind of like said earlier, you know, we're going to get into it, but this could have been a lot different Bears season. So stay tuned for the what if segment of this, uh, this podcast. Um, but you can't give too much credit to Chuck Pagano on top, uh, Chuck Pagano and Bill Lazor completely that they've completely turned around this offense. Players have stepped up, uh, obviously with play calling players are going to perform to the play. Uh, but they have really stepped up and played with that sense of urgency. Roquan Smith talking about the defensive side of the ball, is an all-pro middle linebacker right now. And it's only his third year in the league. Um, a lot of people may not know this, but Roquan Smith at the beginning of his NFL career had some troubles, not only with his contract, but staying on the field. Uh, there was a time where his tablet was stolen uh, right out of his car at Hallis Hall, which Hallis Hall has plenty of security. So uh, there was a lot of excuses, a lot of big question marks around Roquan Smith, whether he was going to be a legitimate player or not, and Roquan Smith has definitely showed up. I mean, he had over 100 tackles uh, almost halfway through the season, or slightly over halfway through the season. You can't complain when you have a middle linebacker like that, especially at this age. He's He brings that hope to the defense that he's going to carry the defense like Erlacher did for over a decade. So very exciting time for Bears fans, especially with how young the rest of the defense is. When you have guys like Eddie Jackson, you have guys like Jalen Johnson, you know, Cleo Mack is in the prime of his career right now. Uh, Blau Nichols, who is our defensive tackle that's taking over for Eddie Goldman, uh, who decided to sit out this year with the uh, COVID opt-out. And he's one of the best defensive tackles, obviously, in the league besides, you know, Aaron McDonald, uh, or Aaron Donald, excuse me. And it's just, it's mind-blowing how young this unit is and how well they're doing. So very exciting on that. But the offensive line, uh, to go into the offensive side of the ball, the offensive line has stepped up completely, and that is what also needs to happen against the Minnesota Vikings. And Minnesota has a pretty tough defense um, that, you know, it's definitely not saying that the Texans uh, had a bad defense with J.J. Watt on the other side of the ball, but J.J. Watt was barely able to get to Mitch Trubisky this past week. So something that's really exciting about that is that the offensive line has stepped up completely over these last couple games, and that was from the revamp. Uh, when Ryan and I were on the po- one of our first podcasts, we talked about what was my ideal offensive line. And I'd be throwing Alec Bars out there, uh, Sam Mustafer, and because the reason why I said those two guys initially is because they were on one of the greatest, in my opinion, uh, college offensive lines in a very long time at Notre Dame with a guy named Quentin Nelson right aside them, who was a top five pick for the Colts and is one of the top 10 players in the league as an offensive lineman. So um, shout out to the offensive line for really stepping up, especially Sam Mustafer and Alex Bars. 
Uh, they've done a great job lifting it to new levels, and that gives a lot of hope next season. And this is without um, James Daniels, by the way. So the Bears' offensive line has some hope and momentum going right now. They need to continue to do that in order to win games, uh, and it gives Ryan Pace a little ease. I'm not, and I still want him to go out in his first round pick, get a, a true left tackle, get rid of Charles Leno. But you have a, you know, a diamond in the rough with these two new guys who both were just random pickups over the last couple of years. Um, Ryan Pace has done a great job in that point. They're making him look better in his case to stay in Chicago. Will that happen? I don't know. But, you know, the Bears are doing very well. They're opening up the run game for everyone with this new offensive line. Um, there's still penalties, obviously. A lot of them are on Charles Leno Jr., um, who we do, I believe, the Bears will move on from this offseason. Cut a lot of cap space. Uh, there will be some dead money involved if they were to cut him, but if they were to somehow trade him for a late-round pick, I think that could be a great opportunity for the Chicago Bears. Um, but going back into the defense for this game, everything has to apply perfectly for this defense. They shut down Delvin Cook. Great job last time they played uh, the Minnesota Vikings at Soldier Field. Akeem Hicks, a lot of people might not know this and look out for this in Sunday's game, but Akeem Hicks and Delvin Cook do not like each other. Why? It's always been a competitive factor. Akeem Hicks has, has been on this Bears team for four years, almost five years now, and he has been there for the bad days. He's been there for the good days, and but he's always been a competitor. And when you have one of the best running backs in the league in Delvin Cook on Minnesota on the other side of the ball, Akeem Hicks is going to make it known, I'm, I'm going to stop you. And during the Minnesota game, he, Delvin Cook was red hot. You know, Fantasy owners know he was one of the best pickups to have. And Dalvin Cook was completely stopped by Akeem, just Akeem Hicks himself. Hicks got hurt later in the game, and then Cooks was able to open it up. So I think that, you know, you have to continue to shut down uh, Dalvin Cook. Now with Blau Nichols, our other defensive tackle, also stepping up, he's going to he's in for a long day, and, and the Vikings know that. Um, also continue to be ball hawks. Eddie Jackson almost had an interception last week. Uh, Danny Trevathan almost had an interception last week. And that aggressiveness is back, kind of like what I was hitting on, that Chuck Pagano is able to play more aggressive on defense. That needs to happen against the Minnesota Vikings. You need to get into Kirk Cousins' head just like the Bears did into the Deshaun Watson. And look what happened. He was shut down completely with only one touchdown pass. So Kirk Cousins hates playing against the Bears. He has never had a good game against them. He got lucky last time with the defense because the offense was just completely non-existent. So the Bears need to make sure that they shut down that Minnesota defense completely. Um, quick shout-out to special teams, too. Just keep doing what you're doing, Cairo Santos. I mean, 18 field goals in a row. Uh, you cannot beat that. That's the first time since 20, 2006 with Robbie Gold who did it. Um, so the Bears, I think, are going to end up getting rid of Eddie Pinheiro, uh, who was the Bears kicker last year. He's, he's a great guy. He's funny, brings a lot of energy. Unfortunately, he had a groin injury uh, right before the season started. And Santos came in, and you can't replace a guy who's in 18 in a row. So it's a, NFL's a business. Eddie Pinheiro will definitely find a job elsewhere, but I do not think it's going to be on the Chicago Bears. That Santos is a pretty young guy still. He's had a great story in the NFL. And, you know, if it's, consi- if it's working, especially with the Bears, all of our kicking issues over the last couple of years, stick with Santos. Um, so as long as he's doing what he's doing with Minnesota, I see Minnesota being a dub. Um, but with that... This team will only go as far as Mitch takes them. And that starts, obviously, in Minnesota, uh, along with the help of other teams uh, in, in other divisions and our own division. With certain wins and losses, the Bears still have a pretty decent shot at making the playoffs. We need Mitch to continue to play with this consistency entering the next couple games. We need him to play out like this because not only will that save our season, but it also could save Mitch's career with, career as a whole, whether that's with the Bears or not. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit, speaking of the future, but let's break down what the Bears need to happen in order for them to make the playoffs. And, you, and Bears fans, you're going to be rooting for a couple teams you're not used to rooting for. Uh, the, le- the you know Number four is definitely going to be you know a kick to the heart, but trust me, it, it's for the better for later in the season for the Bears. So the Bears have to win out. That's, that's no, I mean, technically they can lose one more game if they could lose to the Jaguars, but they can't lose to the Packers. Um, but we don't want the Bears. We, if the Bears are going to go for the playoffs, they need to win out because now they're in the position that they're not going to get one of the best players in the draft. They're going to get a pick between 12 and 20 now. Um, pretty 99% sure of that. So 
Bears fans, we want the Bears that went out to get a better record to make that fight for the playoffs to end at least nine and seven, uh, have, carry some momentum not only into next season but also to make it to the playoffs, and you know, kind of evaluate this team as a whole with Bill Lazor as uh, the offensive coordinator. Now, the Bears need help from the Cardinals. The Cardinals need to lose at least one game, which they play the Eagles, who have a red hot Jalen Hurts as their quarterback after replacing Carson Wentz. They have. The 49ers, who are always a competitive matchup, and then the LA Rams, who beat the Bears earlier in the year and actually are one of the Super Bowl favorites for this upcoming this upcoming playoff race. So I think the Cardinals are going to for sure lose that Rams game. There's no doubt about that, and I think that they are going to lose to the Niners. As a Bears fan, I hope they do, but the Cardinals are so streaky. They're, I mean, next year they're going to be a good team with you know a few more pickups, more experience, but. I think the Cardinals have a very tough schedule. And don't sleep on the Eagles with Jalen Hurts. Um, I think the Cardinals are going to get that one loss that the Bears need in order to move up because the Bears beat the Buccaneers earlier in the year, which the Vikings, who are technically ahead of the Bears, lost to the Buccaneers, and same with the Cardinals, I believe. Um, so stay, don't quote me on that, but the Cardinals do need to lose one more game. Now, moving on to the Vikings. Obviously, the Bears need to beat the Vikings this upcoming Sunday, but the Vikings also need to lose one more game. The Vikings do have a pretty tough schedule coming up. They have us, the Chicago Bears, this upcoming Sunday. They have the New Orleans Saints coming up next week who are already clinched in the playoffs, which is going to be very tough. And then we need the Lions uh, to step up and do what they did against us, who, by the way, the Lions almost beat the Packers this past week with a very injured roster. So... Watch out for the Lions. Um, Not having Matt Patricia as your head coach anymore definitely does a thing or two. So um, the Vikings need to lose two out of the final three, one being against Chicago, one being against the Saints. I think they lose both those games, and who knows about the Lions. So, um, And then the Bears would own the tiebreaker over the Vikings because the Vikings lost to the Buccaneers. We beat the Buccaneers. So that would be where the tiebreaker comes into play. Now, at number four, the Green Bay Packers. I I know that we said this would be a little tough, but we need the Packers to win their next two games. And so they, that means if the Packers win their next two games, they will clinch the number one seed, okay? Now, if they clinch by week 16, so entering week 17, they're already clinched. They're the number one. They get the bye this, uh, to, for the first week of the postseason. They're going to sit their starters. Aaron Rodgers is notoriously known for getting hurt against the Chicago Bears. You cannot lose a guy like Devontae Adams, you know, his number one weapon, and then you know Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. There is a lot, and especially their starting offensive line too, keeping Rodgers safe. So if we're willing, if the Packers were to do that, we, we're all Packers fans the next two weeks. Low key, don't put on a shirt or anything. Wear your Bears pride. Don't say it out loud or anything. You can think it though. We need the Packers to win the next, to win the next two games. So I'm not going to say the words. Just best of luck. That's what I'm going to leave it at. Uh, best of luck to the Packers. We need their help all we can get. And then we need to beat them in week 17, obviously. So that's going to be, but again, with no starters, no Aaron Rodgers, hopefully the Bears ha- can have a good shot to beat them at Soldier Field. Um, I can, that would be, and also that's a playoff game. I mean, every game is a playoff game for the Bears moving forward. Um, so, and then the Kansas City Chiefs at number five, we need the Chiefs. And uh, we really, really need them to beat the Saints because if they beat the Saints, then the Packers can, you know, move forward and knocking them out of the number one spot. So, again, we need the Chiefs to beat the Saints this upcoming weekend. So Patrick Mahomes needs to torch that Saints defense, which is no which is no walk in the park. So we need that for sure. And then the Lions, if you can, please beat the Vikings in Week 17. I'm not going to say much more to that. Just please, if you can, that'd be great. Um, speaking of the future, kind of hit on this earlier, is that I think the Bears will keep Mitchell Trubisky if he continues this level of play. Um, no matter playoffs or not, if he continues this level of play, I think that you know who Ryan Pace, if he were to somehow be the Bears general manager next season, he could you know, give Mitch a, hey, here's a two-year prove-it deal because we declined your fifth-year option. If you do that, you lead us to you know, the playoffs, you bring this team back together, then I'll give you your money. So it's a possibility. I feel like Mitch would take it because Mitch has a lot of fire under him. And I feel like the Bears would also live up to that promise because they kind of did that with Jay Cutler. I mean, we signed Mike Glennon. 
I think that Ryan Pace or whoever the the Bears culture will want to keep Mitch Trubisky. Um, and then with that, if they were to give him that contract, the Bears are gonna ha- don't really have that much cap this upcoming offseason. So they're going to have to franchise Allen Robinson, which is okay because that means he's going to get a fair, a very fair payday. And what the Bears can say to him is, hey, we need to franchise tag you this year because of salary cap. It's not that because we want to, even though Ryan Pace should have found a way to sign him earlier in the season and extend him to make him feel co- confident, but he's claims he's not focused on it right now, but every player in his position would be. Give A-Rob that franchise tag. Then you're going to have more cap in the 2022 because you can cut Nick Foles you can cut some other bad contracts. You're no longer going to have to pay Buster Screen. You're no longer going to have to pay Leno. You're no longer going to have to pay some of these big-name players or big-name contracts, uh, not big-name players in the NFL, that are on this Bears roster, and then they can go out and pay Allen Robinson. So there's a lot to consider here uh, for the future. But again, I think the Bears will give Mitch Trubisky a two-year prove-it deal, franchise tag Allen Robinson, and move forward from there. So um, you know, kind of to wrap it all up, Again, keys to beating Minnesota. Continue the strong uh, pass-to-rush uh, ratio on offense. It works. It opens each other up. And defenses aren't sure what to do because they're not. They're like, oh, man, the Bears' offense is actually good right now. So what do we do? We used to be able to just – this was a cakewalk. And then the defense, again, needs to continue to show pressure on Kirk Cousins. He hates playing the Bears. He knows the other side of the ball. He knows how scary it is. And Bill Lazor, Chuck Pagano, please be aggressive with your play calling. Make things happen. Bill Lazor, don't be over-aggressive. Just whatever you did against Houston, keep it up. With that, moving into predictions, I'm predicting that the Bears are going to beat the Minnesota Vikings. And I said this on a Split Division podcast uh, yesterday. The Bears are going to beat the Minnesota Vikings 28-24. to The offense is clicking. The defense it plays the way they did against the Texans. The Bears will walk out with a dub. Who knows? They could even, if they did what they did against Deshaun Watson, who knows? They could even, you know, put the Vikings even into a worse position. So new segment right now, we're going to do a new segment called What If Wednesday. Um, So what if in Chicago sports? So the question today is what if? What if the Bears had Mitch Trubisky playing the entire season over Nick Foles? I think that the Bears would be 9-4, and and I kind of hit on this earlier. I think that the Bears would be 9-4 and right now. Out of that six-game winning uh, losing streak, they would have beat the New Orleans Saints, who we lost to in overtime. We would have beat the Indianapolis Colts, who we lost to by eight points because neither team had an offense. And I think that if we had Mitch, he would have made opportunity. We would have scored and won that game. And then finally, uh, back to the Vikings game. No, the Vikings, the Saints, and the Colts. Yes. So back to the Vikings game. We only lost by six points. Again, absolutely no offense. Defense was, you know, making Kirk Cousins' life hell. I think the Bears would have won that. The Bears would be, uh, again, 9-4 and four right now, but it's a big what-if. And that's something that Chicago fans are known for. Just what if this would have happened? You know, next week we're going to hit on a Bulls one. I guarantee you some of you guys have an idea of what that could be, you know, hinting at the Bulls. But, you know, comment – uh, comment your thoughts on the what if, what, what, what would your reaction be? What would the Bears record be if Mitch Trubisky would have played the whole season? So with that, uh, moving away from the Bears, we're going to go into the Chicago Bulls. So the Bulls played their second preseason game this past Sunday against the Houston Rockets again at the United Center, and the team looked much better, uh, much more flowing. Uh, it was well, it, was, it looked like a completely different type of offense too, a lot more ball movement, a lot more communication, and a lot more aggressiveness toward the hoop. Um, you know, for example, Wendell Carter and Lowry were going to the lane and they were m- trying to make plays. Their shooting might not have been the greatest. That's fine because you're, you're telling the defense, we're going to be aggressive here. And that opens up other opportunities for Zach Levine, Kobe White, Patrick Williams, Otto Porter Jr. And all other types of wing players who are going to be able to shoot mid range shots or three pointers. And Zach Levine had 23 points before the half. He, he played out of his mind in a preseason game, which is fine. But the, the Rockets were playing John Wall. They were playing DeMarcus Cousins. They were playing some of these tough ex-All-Stars. And yes, James Harden wasn't playing, but that's okay. I mean, we'll take it. They still have a pretty decent roster over there in the Houston Rockets, even though it's a little bit of a mess right now with James Harden wanting out. Uh, players are frustrated. No one's getting re-signed. So Houston's a little bit of a mess. But again, the the Bulls looked fantastic in their, compared to Game 1. They looked fantastic. Um, against the Houston Rockets. They got the win, which is great. Um, and again, the backcourt's looking great with Zach Levine and Kobe White leading the way. So you can't, 
The Bulls fans have been wanting this for a long time. You know, you had a backcourt of Jimmy Butler, you know, Derrick Rose, um, you know, for a while, and you miss that energy. This whole this whole season with a whole new front office, whole new coaching staff feels like it did in the early 2010s. So be very excited about this Bulls fan, uh, this Bulls team, Bulls fans. It's a good time to be be coming back into it. Uh, hopefully, you know, we get a little bit more action uh, moving forward, and then eventually they let fans back into United Center because this team is fun to watch. So make sure that you tune in uh, to tonight where they play the Oklahoma City Thunder in Oklahoma City. Uh, Bulls current head coach Billy Donovan coached the Thunder for a very long time, so this is a homecoming game for him. Uh, even though it doesn't mean anything because it is preseason. But the Bulls need to continue to go out and fight and show teams like, oh, man, this is a young roster. They're fast. They're tough. They can take shots. We need to watch out for them. And, you know, this kind of does feel like a real season game for a lot of these players because the Bulls haven't played for nine months before their first preseason game. And they're hungry. They want to go out there. They want to win. And this roster wants to prove the potential they really have. And they were being held back because of poor leadership and bad coaching within Jim Boylan. So super exciting uh, to watch the Oklahoma City Thunder game tonight. Make sure to tune into that uh, later this evening. Um, And then just a few more things about this game coming up. Patrick Williams, who the Bulls drafted uh, this year at number four, is growing more and more each time he touches the ball. He's he looks smooth. He has a smooth shot. He makes good play play uh, decision making. And the Bulls just look like a better unit. And him being out there, being 19 years old, he looks like he's been in the league for a little bit already. So I really like his playing style. He's kind of collective on the court. He's mature. He's funny outside the court. Like Chicago needed athletes that were funny and interactive. And you get that with Kobe White and Patrick Williams. Um, And then, again, just back onto the court, his attacking and scoring. He's taking advantage of this playing time, which is definitely something every young player should be doing. But he's getting a lot of it. Uh, he's talking to his teammates and coaches about how to improve himself, and he looks like he wants to succeed in the NBA, which not saying that any other player doesn't, but he looks like every single play is like, what can I do to be better? What can I do to be this? I want to be the greatest I can be. And that's something that Bulls fans should really be looking forward to, especially when they have a guy like Kobe White as that as well. could be a dynamic duo for the next couple of years, or next plenty of years moving forward. So for tonight's game prediction, I'm predicting that the Bulls will win in Oklahoma City, 101 to 95. It's going to be another good game with the direction of play that they're currently going. I know it's only been two preseason games, but you know, with the momentum and you know how they want to get out there, I think the Bulls have a good shot. It also depends on who they play. If they play like their true uh, starting five, like they have been, and you know, letting these guys get playing time, getting to know each other a little bit more, I think that the Bulls have a really good shot at winning tonight. So, super excited for this ball club. Uh, more to come back uh, this upcoming Sunday to talk more about the Bulls. And again, on my Twitter, I'll be talking about it more. So with that, uh, moving into the final segment of the day is Illinois State basketball. So Illinois State yesterday beat Chicago State 92-61. to And a win is a win. Congratulations, Redbirds. You're back to 500. Doesn't really say much, though, when you're beating the teams that you should be beating. Chicago State, in, in no offense, is not a good basketball program. Uh, Greenville, who's a Division Three program, who the Birds set multiple NCAA records against, was also not a good team. And, you know, the, the Redbirds are just not, you know, playing with that fire. They're not being competitive in games where they should be competitive. They got blown out by Ohio State. They got blown out by Ball State. And they got blown out by Murray State, um, all double-digit losses. So... They need to find a way to play with that toughness and that momentum and that confidence that they're doing in these lower games. Um, You know, this, I mean, the next uh, Illinois State Redbirds game is December 27th. They got the Slyola Ramblers who went to the Final Four a couple years ago. And I actually was at the last Slyola Illinois State game at Loyola right before COVID hit. And the Birds were just outplayed. They're outclassed. They, They were in it for a while and then came, you know, the second half and, you know, with it, with seven minutes left, the birds just gave up, and this birds team is missing a lot of strong players that they once had. So they need to they need to you know get a win in the Valley Conference, especially against Loyola. Their next two games are against Loyola at Loyola on the twenty seventh and twenty eighth. They need to win at least one of those games to get that confidence. Like okay, we can beat good teams. We are a good roster. Let's go out there and and get it. So you know. You know, Birds players, I really want to see you guys succeed. I really want you guys to make it to the dance. Um, 
you know, it was heartbreaking a couple of years ago watching, you know, Paris Lee, Phil Fain, Yarrow, all these really good players just be that close to making it, and it was to the NIT, which the NIT is great. I think it's better than nothing. Um, if the if the birds can make it to the NIT, get some momentum with this, you know, this younger team, go ahead. But you know, the Illinois State Redbirds, that's their hope right now. And uh, in order to, you know, the football team is so inconsistent. They're, I mean, they're not playing right now. They're playing the spring season. They're all what, you know, alumni are looking for in the scorecard, and they need to step up and make that happen. So best of luck to them. They get a little break for the next 12, uh, you know, nine days. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 11 days. So take that 11 days off, get rested up, and move forward from there. So with that, we're going to move into close. This was a shorter uh, episode today, but uh, we're going to wrap up today's episode of Just Another Year Chicago. Our next episode will be this upcoming Sunday to recap the Bears and Vikings game, hopefully with some great news about the Chicago Bears. Uh, more on the Chicago Bulls as they do have that preseason game tonight against Oklahoma City Thunder. Any new news about the Chicago Cubs and Chicago White Sox? Uh, any news about the Blackhawks and Illinois State basketball and more? So till then, please remember to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all content. Make sure to follow me at Chicago Nick, and I see no K. Uh, on Twitter, and look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Thank you again for listening in to Just Another Year Chicago with Nick Rohde and Ryan Chapman. We'll see you guys next time.